117 laps to go in the Food City 500. Leader Kyle Busch and runner-up Jimmy Johnson are out there in clean air. Not so third place Denny Hamlin. He has a big wad of traffic to get through and he's trying to pick his way through it but a lot of those cars are battling for position as well. Hamlin has a bit of a lead. Casey Kane at the, uh, on the fourth place car Casey Kane right at the end of that pack but a little bit white knuckle racing in there. Now Kane has to pass the same cars with the number nine that Hamlin just dealt with. And see when you get in situations like this it breaks your rhythm. You will hear the spotter say get back in your rhythm once you pass somebody you kind of get going and you get back in your rhythm and that doesn't mean to turn up your iPod. It just <laughs> means that when you're going down the straightaway listen you listen to the engine it's, uh, uh, uh. there you go. Now he will hear that sound on both straightaways and he'll back off at that same pitch. That's part of the rhythm. Then the other part is off the gas, little break. One, two, three. Uh, here we go. So, and you just get in a, you know, throw the car in, catch it, pick up the gas, touch the brake, listen for the rhythm of the engine. We asked a number of the drivers in today's race to expand on that thought about the rhythm of racing at Bristol. The thing about Bristol is it's rhythm. You know, it is it is rhythm. It's about doing the same thing right over and over and over. Because there's no other track like this, so that it's not like you have this, you know, ingrained, you know, sense for what's fast. Usually if you're consistent here, it's it's as good as being fast. It's uh, it's a nightmare when, when you can't get into that rhythm and you can't get the car working the way you want it. Uh, it's a long, long day. Jeff Burton's had a little trouble finding that rhythm today. He won here last year, leading the last two laps in an overdrive style shootout. But this hasn't been the best day for the cat car, but slowly, methodically, he's worked his way up to 11. And, and just a, another little piece of the puzzle is hand-eye coordination. When you hear the engine where you want it and your left and your right hand is up on top of that wheel where you want it, that also is a signal that everything is going the way you want it to, a part of the rhythm package. Steve? Mike, exactly right about Jeff Burton, last year's winner. However, once he got in or around the top 10, the problem is the back end has been just a little bit too loose for his liking. Boy, Steve, he, just, he just cracked the top <laughs> ten because he drove by David Ruderman in that double he had, zero. He had that back end out like he was talking about, too. That thing was swung out there loose. But he's definitely our biggest mover. Remember, he started in the 38th position, so he's gained 28 spots since the start of this race as we're approaching 100 laps to go. And as, as you watch his hands, when his hand is right where he wants it to be, he that's, that's, that's time to pick up the throttle. He waits on the car. He pulls the wheel down. See how it's down? Now he says, okay, I'm ready to go now. Now I'm back up on the straightaway. And that's just all part of getting in your rhythm. Ahead of him, Montoya's the ninth place car. But the way he drives the car, that's old school driving right there. Most of these kids today, they want to hold the wheel at three and nine and drive it like a go-kart. That's the way we used to do it right there, man. You got to crank on it. When it won't turn, what do you do? Now, when when I said he had trouble finding his rhythm, it's because he's been in heavy traffic all day. He really hasn't had a chance to just run those kind of laps you talked about without dealing with other cars, one side or another. They do it definitely look like Scott Miller in that group. They've made the right adjustments. They've kept up at the racetrack because he just took that position away from Montoya. That moves him up to the ninth spot. Twelve rounds open Friday. Uh, it opens this Friday, and that is a thriller with wrestler John Cena in the starring role. And if Bristol's not enough excitement for you, and you can't wait for Martinsville to go and see 12 rounds. That's a corker. This is about the point in the race, Larry, when I'd say, how many more laps are there to go? They'd say 50 more to go, 50 more. And they'd be lying to you. They'd be lying yeah. to you. <laughs> how many now? Well, there's still 50. <laughs> well, let's make then, it 100. And then you'd get really mad. See, when I get in there... <laughs> We'll hurry up and get in here and finish right. this thing off. That's right. I've been helped out of the car, carried out of this place many, many times from cramps, dehydration, and worn out. This place will do it to you. Now that's Travis Quapple trying to stay on the lead lap. He's back in the 18 spot, so uh, he's picking them up and laying them down. He's having a good run. 100 laps to go. 
So if you take DW's advice, tell and she's the wife's got chores for you to do. Tell her there's only 45 laps to go. Yeah, and it'll only Actually, take about 15 minutes. Yeah, it's 89 <laughs> laps to go, and the three leaders are all together, courtesy of Travis Quaffle. Quaffle in the 28 was trying to keep from going a lap down, and he really held up Kyle Busch, and then he held up Jimmy Johnson a bit, and Johnson. Uh, a little close uh, encounter right there. Now, Quaffle's got nothing to lose. Everything to race for and nothing to lose. If they don't find a sponsor, this team has to shut down. He was really working hard to stay on the lead lap. But I, I got to tell you, this thing is starting to really get tight up near the front. That 18, the 48, the 11, the 9, the 5, those guys are there. Tell you what, I believe if we get us another caution, this 031 car, Jeff Burton, they're going to be a player because there he is battling Jeff Gordon for the eighth position. Remember, Jeff Burton started back in the 38th position. But this is the way Jeff, this is the way Jeff Burton would run this race. This is the way Mark Martin would run this race. Kind of lay back. Don't talk clear, about clear, me much. Clear. Way, Come inside buddy. 100 laps. Next. Go get him. Well, it, it's not laying back so much, Darrell, as it is Jeff Burton doesn't care if he leads 300, 400 laps of this race. There's only one lap he wants to lead, and that's about all he led that's here last it. year in winning. He's getting himself in the hunt. I tell you, our leader, Kyle Busch, in that 18 car with about 84 laps to go, he is in heavy, heavy traffic behind yep. Eric Almarola and Bobby Labonte in the 96. I don't like this because Almarola hasn't been on the bottom all day, so that is where Bush has to go. Bobby Labonte hasn't got off the bottom all day. Well, the and what you don't like is for Kyle is that, you know, we know he's very impatient, and we know he can get yep. very frustrated in a hurry. And here he is with guys that are going to race him pretty hard, and yeah. that, that, get, that just gets to you, man. He's trying to force the 96, the 96 to give him the bottom lane. Plus, you got and that's, yeah. that's a little bit of a struggle there. He got the 48 now that, uh, you know, if he happens to make the right move, he could pass him right here. Looks like Jim Johnson's going to jump to the high side, follow Bobby Labonte. If Kyle Busch can clear that 96 car, you can see how he pulls. Jimmy Johnson off the corner. I think he'll make this pass in three and four. Yeah, he just dove it in there pretty hard and got the line, got the uh, got up in front of Bobby Labonte there. Darrell, I, I, this I don't understand. Bobby Labonte's one of the cleanest drivers on the racetrack. If you race him clean, he'll give you all the room you want. If you want to muscle under him, you'll get him up on the wheel. Yeah, well, the problem is that, that, that you can move to the high side now on this racetrack. And you can maintain a pretty good speed up there and choke that guy on the inside down. Yeah, Bobby's trying to get out of the way, really, but he can't just put on the brakes and no. pull over. I know we've been watching what Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson's been doing, but that 11 car, Denny Hammond's right there. But here's the car that's been on the move. Casey Kane in that nine car. Krista talked about him earlier. He's just been having a nice, solid, quiet day. And here he is with 78 laps to go, sitting there within striking distance. Well, there's there's some boys up there, but there's a man back there in the back, too. That five car's not four behind, and he's he's got an idea of getting up here and making a race out of it before it's over with. Our pole sitter, Mark Martin. Mark dropped back a bit. He has only led once today for two laps. And you're right, he's had a pretty quiet race. Just kind of been lurking there outside of the back here. Now here's what we need to set up. We're getting close to 100 laps into this green flag run. We know there's going to be one more pit stop whether we stay green or not. But remember on the last green flag run at about 120 laps, we started seeing some people have some tire issues wearing the tires out. So when will they pit? We'll find out. 75 laps to go at Bristol. Sixty five laps to go here in Bristol and there's your leader Kyle Busch has dominated led after a hundred laps led after two hundred led after three hundred and after four hundred laps the driver though here at Bristol who's led the most laps Kyle Busch in the last six races here has not won and just moments ago Dale Earnhardt Jr. about to get lapped. Yes it'll be the second time today Dale Jr.'s car is not working they've had an opportunity to get it better and it's just not paid off for him so once again he's getting ready to go back down another lap courtesy of our leader, Kyle Busch. And Jimmy Johnson currently running second. Denny Hamlin third, followed by Casey Kane. Veterans like Mark Martin, Jeff Burton moving on up as D.W. and Larry have talked about. He is now seventh. What about the chances of Kyle 
and Denny Hamlin teammates young and restless tangling toward the end. Well it's all I think going to come down to the pit stop. Larry McReynolds was talking about how close we're getting to a pit stop and I think it's going to be decided on pit road once again with a green flag stop. We saw yesterday where Kyle Busch led and dominated the nationwide race. They had a problem on pit road. It cost him a win there. So you've got to have an opportunity right now that once they get on pit road those crews cannot afford to make a mistake. Neither can the driver getting on pit road under green flag stop. We haven't done that all day today. This scene in Bristol like a Greek theater. It might be the theater of the absurd when we see those stops. And talking about the pit stops, these are Jeff's choices for today's AT&T fastest pit crew. Hamlin, Johnson, and Kyle Busch. Don't forget to vote the AT&T fastest and most valuable pit crew of the year from your AT&T phone. Text the pit crew's car number to 2258. And we appreciate your vote. That's it from the Hollywood Hotel. Let's rejoin Daryl Larry and Mike. Thanks, Chris. 59 laps to go. One more pit stop in the offing. And Kevin Harvick up against the wall in turn four. This could be the caution. It is. There it is. There's the everyone caution. else has been looking for. It looked like I might have had a tire, Larry. What a weekend, bud. What a weekend. You think of anything I had more fun doing? <laughs> well, one thing he did have some fun doing, he won the Nationwide Series race, the first time he's ever won a race in his own race car in the Nationwide Series. But it's been a tough weekend in this 29 they, car. They've had trouble with that car ever since they backed it out of the truck. There he goes. Pow. A well-worn path up to the safer barrier. Now, the good news is, not a lot of good news, but we do have interliners in the right side tires here. Uh, that's one thing that's a little different about this, the short tracks. We do run interliners in the right sides. That's just a safety shield in case the tire goes down. Conspiracy theorists unite. Dale Earnhardt Jr. got the free pass. And that's how many today? Well, it's three, but in this case, you just couldn't time Kevin Harvick. Okay, it's two. Kevin Harvick uh, losing that tire. Pit road's open, and here come the leaders. Let's start with Steve Burns. Mike, Jeff Burton just saying my takeoff is a little slow and I'm a little freer than I want to be. Crew Chief Scott Miller says, let's go up on air pressures all the way around. A half pound at all four tires for Jeff Burton, Krista. Jimmy Johnson is tight throughout the center. It's going to be a four tire stop for the 48. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch is saying his front end is tight and his rear end is tight in the center. He doesn't know what to do. Steve Addington said, let's go back on that air pressure. Matt. And Denny Hamlin is in. He says the car is way too tight, three quarters of the way through the center, just like it was in practice. He needs it to be freed up a lot more. Trying to get the left sides on. Sherman's got the lugs on, and the 11 is away. Tell you what, that 18 crew didn't get beat off pit road that time. Look no how what? big of a lead. That Casey Kane in the nine, Kenny Francis, they were the real winner. Yeah, I tell you, that nine car is coming, Larry. Watch his lap times. He's as good or better than anybody right now. I'd watch him. The Gibbs cars will be up front on the restart, and nobody hungers more for a win in Thunder Valley than Joe Gibbs drivers. We'll tell you why when we come back. One lap to go, and we'll restart with 51 laps to go. Leading is Kyle Busch. Last summer here, he led 415 laps. Finished second. Today, he's led 322 laps, both dominating performances Hasn't been able to find victory lane. And right behind him, Denny Hamlin. The last two spring races here, he's led the white flag lap. He hasn't been to victory lane. Those guys have got to be sitting on the edge of their seats. Car owners, crew chiefs, drivers. Hamlin dominated Richmond last year, led about two-thirds of the race, didn't win. Mm. Ready to go green with our Claret and Clear to Drive restart. Get Claret and Clear, get back to feeling like yourself again. Well, all I know is there's 160,000 people standing on our feet. If you ever go down to the local short track for the 50-lap feature, that's what we got here. 51 laps to go with Chris. Plus, we just had a pit stop, get something to drink, get, freshened up, get up in the seat, tighten them belts up real tight. Let's go racing, boys. Marcus Ambrose back in eighth spot has dropped a cylinder. So he'll fade a bit. He was in the top five most of the day. Yeah, he would have. Uh, Hornish pitted out of the box. Got a one -one Marcus may have been all right if they hadn't had this uh, caution here where everybody gets fresh tires. Down the cylinder hurts you a little bit, but you can kind of keep up when everybody's on old tires. Whoa, Jimmy Johnson. Look out, Jimmy Johnson. Mark Martin has edged up now into fourth place with Johnson in fifth. But just an oh. update. 
Boy, Boy they are got stacked up yeah. off turn two, and they still, I don't think, think they're finished yet with this mess. But just an update on Kevin Harvick, the 29 car. They did not wear that tire out. They actually cooked the bead of the tire that goes against the rim. All right, Jimmy Johnson back now in fifth spot. Krista. Remember what I said, Mike, earlier about Jimmy Johnson being Trouble, cold? Krista, Forget about it. They three. had a slow stop there. He came in second and went out fifth. They had problems a lot. Got hung up on the left rear side. Caution. Yeah, David Stremme spinning from contact going into turn number three. Well, that was that area right there, uh, Mike, where you were saying, no, you know, bottled up, and they really were. I mean, there was just a bunch of cars all wadded up right here together. It's the eighth caution of the day, and it comes just a few laps after You know, I Kevin think he Harvick's may have ready. had a tire down or something. Though. That car got loose before he got hit. Let's watch from uh, Dale Jr.'s point of view. Watch this car wobble right here now. It's going sideways there and he, again, and then I don't think Jr. really hit him. Nope. No, I think you're right. Anybody seen Digger today? There he is. 45 laps to go. A.J. Allmendinger gets the free pass on uh, David Stremme, spin in turn three after losing a tire at lap 455, eight caution today. Here's today's NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile monster moment. Kyle Busch going around Jimmy Johnson. Busch has led 332 laps so far, and there's been nobody that he can't pass. No, in three out of the five races we've had this year, you think about Daytona. Dominated Daytona, got out and got knocked out in the wreck. Vegas dominated Vegas. Today dominated. He's got one win out of those three dominations so far. Coming to green with 41 laps to go. There are now 16 cars on the lead lap, including Almendinger. Right behind Kyle Busch, his teammate Denny Hamlin, just as hungry for a win as Kyle is, hungrier yet. And then Casey Kane, Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, the front five, Jeff Gordon. Burton, Newman, Ambrose, Montoya, the top ten. Yeah, you've got the two Toyotas, the Dodge of Casey Kane, and then three of the Chevrolets of Hendrick Motorsports right behind there, fourth through sixth. Yeah, I think Jeff Gordon, uh, I think they may have made some adjustments on that car because they went way off the wrong way there but, uh, the run before, but it looks like he's keeping up pretty good this time. They seem to have a short run car, and that's what we've got. When they put those tires on, it's 51 laps to go. And two guys, Larry, that I think have done a great job today, come in here just kind of on the bubble. Mark Martin in the five, and uh, Ryan Newman in the 39. Newman sitting there in a spot. He needed a good run today. Hopefully, he's going to get a good finish out of this thing. He's been running good all day. Now, amongst the leaders, the lap cars of Robbie Gordon, number seven, and Bobby Labonte, 96. Labonte holding to the bottom. Lead lap cars working their way past. Labonte's been a tough pass all day, but yep. uh, even now he's down out of the way trying to, trying to give the guys room, but he's uh, he's got a decent race car. He just doesn't have a car good enough to hold these guys up. Tony Stewart in that 14 car, he's trying to stay the first car down to get the free pass should we get the caution. Now behind that group, Jeff Burton, last year's winner, Sitting in seventh, battling Ryan Newman. You know, not far behind this battle right here. We'll continue to monitor Marcos Ambrose in that 47 car. has been reported he's down a cylinder, but he's still hanging there in the top 10 in 10th with 35 laps to go. Probably more like what he's accustomed to. It run like a nationwide car right now. Yeah. A little slow on the straightaway, but digging through the corners. Holding on to a top 10 spot. Uh, Montoya made that move as Travis Quapel slipped up the racetrack. Montoya jumped underneath. Boy, Montoya's had a great day here trying to nail down only his second short track top 10 since moving to NASCAR. Yeah, out there running the top. Still out there, the 28. Still going to be there. Yeah, you know, I talked to Brian Patty, Juan Pablo Montoya's crew chief this morning. He said, you know, we, we are improving every week. We've not had the greatest luck, but we feel good like we're moving forward every single week we go to the racetrack. Jimmy Johnson gets around Mark Martin there as a 
power move. Good job. That's fourth place. And here comes Jeff Gordon. One went on it. One, 48 went by on the inside. 24 going to go by on the outside. Mark says, hey, teammates, cut me some slack. Now, while we're watching this battle, nothing's really changed at the front as Kyle Busch is maintaining about a half a second lead over his teammate Denny Hamlin with now 30 laps to go. When we talked to Denny Hamlin yesterday, a lot of the comparisons he made to other teams were to the other car at Joe Gibbs Racing at the front of the pack here, Kyle Busch. And uh, those two measure themselves against each other. And I get the feeling there's nobody that Denny would rather beat here today than the car that's right in front of him. And when I talk about physical and mental fatigue, I think about Kyle running like three, ra three races on a, on a given weekend, trucks, nationwide, and cup. He ran 300 laps here yesterday, finished six. That's the difference in he and Hamlin right now. Hamlin set out yesterday because he didn't. He wanted to be fresh for today. So uh, laps around the racetrack doesn't seem to hurt Kyle Busch at all. Matter of fact, they seem to make him better. <laughs> I know the magic number there, Daryl. 23. <laughs> That's how old Kyle <laughs> Busch is. Good point. <laughs> 27 laps to go. Kyle Busch holding off Denny Hamlin by half a second. Kyle Busch beginning to stretch it out a little bit on Denny Hamlin. 20 laps to go. The two Joe Gibbs Toyotas at the front of the field. Casey Kane third. Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon. And contact between David Stremme and Joey Logano two laps ago in turn four. Well, Stremme's one lap down. Logano's a couple laps down. I think probably just wanted him to move out of the way. I don't think he expected him maybe to knock the fence down, but he did. Yeah, Stremme's no on a mission right now, trying to get up there to become the first car lap down. He's got a couple of cars in front of him, Tony Stewart and Travis Quapple. So he was not going to waste a lot of time behind Logano in the 20. And the good news is now, if we have a caution, we will have a single file restart because we're inside 20 laps. Right. That's huge on this little racetrack. Two lane door corner clear all the way, all the way. Kyle Busch is trying to become a two time winner at any racetrack for the first time. He's had some coulda, woulda, shouldas here. Got to be. If, if what happened to him, just think about what happened to him last year. Think about what happened to him last, yesterday. I can't imagine what's going through his mind right now as he tries to hang on to the win here. Here's our last ask.com question. Darrell Walter had a seven race win streak at Bristol Motor Speedway. Who broke it? To get the answer at ask.com and enter the ask.com NASCAR challenge. You might win a trip to Talladega from the official search engine of NASCAR. That's, you know what? When seven races, a lot of races. I, I, I'll be the first to admit that, obviously. But <laughs> that's 3,500 laps. Wow. Pretty much mistake free. Yeah. Didn't you say that was when Gary Baker owned the racetrack? And <laughs> he hoped to meet a lot of famous drivers <laughs> of Victory Lane, and all he got to see was you. The only guy who said, man, I could have had my picture maybe you at home. <laughs> Here's a battle for third between Casey Kane in the nine, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. Of course, the 48 team lost some spots on that last pit stop as we're closing in on 13 laps to go. You just saw Coach Gibbs. He wants to break a streak of being able not to close the deal here at Bristol Motor right. Speedway. Casey Kane had to close Jimmy Johnson quickly because they're getting right up into lap traffic. Here comes Johnson back on the inside. But that's where John Andretti's lap car is. Yeah, and John uh, got out of the way nicely, though. Yep. And while they've been going side by side, that 24 car, Jeff Gordon back there in the fifth spot, he's closing in there. You see him right there about three car lengths back. Yeah, they made a good uh, good adjustment on that car, the 24 car, this last pit stop. And he is a lot better than he was the last run. Well, they just showed Kyle Busch 10 laps to go. And Denny Hamlin has closed it down to six tenths of a second as yeah. we watch the battle rage on for third. There's 10 laps to go. There's about a dozen cars sitting out there in front of him he's going to have to deal with. Yeah, that's going to be the tough part. I mean, he's got a cluster of cars here in front of him that he's going to be right up in the middle of when we come down here to the last few laps of this race. That could be the difference. The eight laps to go this time for Kyle Busch in the 18 car has about a half second lead over Denny Hamlin with a lot of lap cars in front of him. Jeff Gordon takes fourth away from Casey Kane. But the action's right in front of the race leader. You got it. And if you pick, if you go on the bottom, 
and you get bogged down trying to pass somebody, that 11 can jump to the outside, and you can have a heck of a battle to the finish line. Oh, we got a blown engine. 20 is blowing up. Cross out. Cross out. Cross It was the teammate of our two leaders, Joey Logano, who has brought out this the ninth caution of the day. Guess what? Around to the truck if there won't can. be any traffic, any lap traffic in their way when they get this restart. No, it'll be a single file restart, and depending on how much cleanup may be necessary, we could have as few as two laps to go when we go green. Out the exhaust pipe, coming off the front straightaway. Now that car has smoke coming out of it today, and it had smoke coming out of it earlier this year. Tony Stewart. For oh, the last 10 yeah. years. <laughs> right. Now, what's now, interesting. Tough break for Logano. Excuse me, Larry. He is going to have to qualify on time next week at Martinsville. He won't be in the top 35, it doesn't look like. Frustration it's a maybe. in a, a couple of ways right there. The engine blows up in the 20, and it really changes the complexity of this race with his two guys up there leading the race. Well, I think the thing Coach is worried about, we're going to a racetrack that I don't think Joy Logano has been to before. And uh, he's going to have to qualify on time, and that's tough to do at Martinsville. It's a maybe, Darrell. Depends on how many cars complete more laps than Logano uh, as the rest of this race runs. But he's going to be right on the cusp of being outside the top 35. Now, here's the situation. we got 16 cars on the lead lap. No free passes available because we're within 10 laps. There's no question the top 8, 10, 11 cars will not pit. I will guarantee you those cars at the back will come in and get those four fresh tires because remember, nobody's been to pit road since about lap 459. Here's what I'd be worried about. Now, wasn't it the uh, last couple of times when these two cars were running first and second at the end of the race, they got ready to take off, neither one of them would go? Fuel pickup problems. Fuel pickup problems, fuel pressure problems. Yeah. I'd be sitting there holding my breath. Carl Edwards and Dale Jr. come on to pit road along with A.J. Allmendinger and Clint Boyer. Those are the four takers among the 16 lead lap cars. Now here's where a single file restart on a small racetrack like this, you can't afford to give up any track position. Unless you're at the last car on the lead lap, you can't come in and start 20th. Well, Edwards was 12th, then Earnhardt Jr. was 14th, so they're not going to lose too many spots. And remember, one of the rules on a down finger restart within 10 laps, the lead lap, not only is it single file restart, all the lead lap cars go to the front of the pack. So we're getting down to it here in Bristol. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin continue the lead. And guess what? More of the same coming at you on Fox next Sunday. Time for a little Martinsville Madness. The paper clip shaped half mile. It's the sports shortest and oldest track. It's too easy to make mistakes. You've got to take it easy. These Hardy fans came here for action and they are not going to be denied. It just proves three wide does not work here in Martinsville. I love this place. A doubleheader weekend on Fox. The Camping World Truck Series Saturday and the Sprint Cup Series on Sunday from Martinsville Speedway. A little bit of cleanup along the front straightaway of the oil dry that was put down to soak up the fluids that came out of Joey Logano's car. And I know you want the racetrack to be uh, clean, but that's up high. And uh, I mean, we're down here at the end of the race, three or four laps to go. Now look at these front four. Kyle Busch has dominated this track, hasn't won here in two years. Denny Hamlin, we've said, has led the white flag lap the last two years in a row here, hasn't won. Jimmy Johnson in third says his resume is not complete because he hasn't won at Bristol. Jeff Gordon in fourth, other than the qualifying race at Daytona, hasn't won anywhere in a It's October of 2007. So we're about to find out who wants it most. And Casey Kane's in the top ten in points in the first time in almost a year. So there's a lot of... This, this race went just about like I thought it would. There were guys at the front that didn't stay there, and there were guys in the back that worked their way to the front. Chris Martin. Well, we have that movie, uh, 12 rounds opening next to Friday. We've had uh, a few laps to go here. Jimmy Johnson off of pit road, the race off with 178 laps to go. He took the lead. Johnson has led a total of 88 laps today, but then Kyle Busch with 131 laps to go takes it back. He has dominated with over 360 laps. Moments ago, the eight caution coming out. 
as we saw Kevin Harvick having some problems creating a caution. A lot of green flag stretches and then Logano, the teammate of Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin for Joe Gibbs Racing bringing out the final caution. 13 lead changes, seven different leaders, but we have teammates Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin followed by teammates Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. Yeah, take a real quick look. Right, you can see that the leaders Kyle Busch, there's 16 cars on the lead on the lead lap along with that eight lead changes today. So what I'm looking at right now is I, I think Daryl and the guys are kind of set it up. When they drop the green flag, I think Denny Hamlin knows he's got to get it done. He's got to get it done in a hurry. And I think Casey Kane, he's going to be, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, they're sitting there going to be ready to pounce on these guys real quick to try to take advantage of what might happen here. So I think this restart is going to be critical. So the teammate stuff may go uh, out the window. It's every man for himself. Mike? Denny Hamlin told us yesterday he's tired of not winning. He's 28 years old. He thinks he should have more than a handful of wins in his resume by this point. We're going to cross 500 laps this time, which means we go into overdrive and we'll have one attempt at a green-white checker. I think if he gets to Kyle Busch, he'll move him out of the way. Here's a, here's a little bit of concern I have. As I was talking about, I'm cleaning up the oil that was uh, in the stay dry. This restart, if, there's a, if, if, if Kyle spins his tires, if he gets a wheel spin there on the takeoff, I mean, Denny Hamlin's going to be all over him. Matter of fact, he may be too much all over him. And uh, so that's something that they're both going to have to watch. They're going to have time this restart just right so that Denny doesn't run over Kyle. But, Mike, you're right. Denny Hamlin told us his rookie season back in 2006. He had the best car for two races. He won those two races. The last two seasons, he's had the best car several races. Only won one time each year. I just saw Kyle clean him up a little bit there. He laid four or two big black marks down. So All right, should that, have him cleaned up pretty good. That Mustang pace car. Gets way out of the way, and Kyle Busch brings them down for the restart. We're in overdrive. Two laps to go. Everybody got a solid restart. Less than 30 seconds. We'll know the winner of this thing. Casey Kane looks to the inside of Gordon. Gordon shuts the door. Kyle nailed it on that restart. He got it just right. No wheel spin. I think it's just going to be close. No fun. But he's pulling away ever so slightly. White flags in the air. And it's Johnson to the outside of Hamlin. Now that could be big. Hamlin is going to have to deal with Jimmy. You're fine, bud. Rudiman gets bumped by Boyer. And here we come to the flag, and wild thing, Kyle Busch dominates in Bristol. With Hamlin second, Johnson third, Gordon and Kane, the top five. And Kyle Busch up, will be stickering all the way to Victor Circle. How about the Coach Gibbs there? One, two. one, two, finish. Thanks, Jeff. Way to go, boys. Way to bring it. You know, it's way too young in his career to call Kyle Busch the dominator, but when he wins, he just really tends to put a whipping on the field. And what, what I was curious, you know, last year had a phenomenal year. Sometimes kids will come into this sport and they'll have a phenomenal year. The question I've had all along is, can he continue to do that? Is he going to be that consistent for a long period of time? That's the mark of a champion. It is the first time Kyle has won more than once at one racetrack in scoring his 14th career victory. Second win here in nine races. Of course, he won here March in 07, first time we ran the, the car of today chassis here. And it's his third top three finish of 2009. So I think it's safe to say that no one has visited Victory Lane more in 2009 than Mom and Pop. Three consecutive weekends for that. That's right. And that kid just is right. He raced 800 laps this weekend. 300 yesterday, 500 today. In the last two Bristol races, last summer and today, he's led 792 of 500 laps. But like Daryl said, this is a rerun of 2008. <laughs> the question will be, we've got a long way to go. Can they continue that into those 10 chase races? I think they learned a lot, Larry. I think the team did. I don't think he had to learn that much. I think the team did. I think you got to lose one to learn how to win one. And as you mentioned, Daryl, he's also won two Camping World truck races and a nationwide race this year to go with his two Sprint Cup victories. He's on pace to beat the record he set last year with the 21 victories in all three series. Well, he's somewhat repeating his brother's victory lap from last week. He's just doing it nose first. Well, we're at Bristol. This was always a special track to Alan Kulwicki. There's a grandstand here named for Alan. 
This is what Allen self described as the Polish victory lap. Winonet down, facing the fans, and saluting them for coming out here and supporting all these drivers. In 1992, we all stood here in tears yes. as uh, Alan Kowicki's hauler left here that day, that sad day when uh, Alan and his, some of his uh, crew members lost their lives in an airplane crash here at uh, Tri Cities. Yep, they were coming back from an appearance in Knoxville, and Kowicki, the reigning champion of the series, was lost to us. So. Nice to see that touch from Kyle Busch as now he pulls toward victory lane. Matt? And a 1-2 finish in overtime for the JGR cars. Denny Hamlin, so describe your car much better on the longer run than the short run, which is what we ended up with. Yeah, we uh, just had that, we had a long run car. We didn't have that short run car. And um, yeah, there were uh, uh, about 200,000 FedEx employees that were hoping uh, we were going to get a win today. But uh, we tried to get a win for them. Just came up a little short. But uh, congratulations, Kyle. It's great to get a 1-2 finish for uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. And, uh, just can't thank this whole team enough. Uh, good job on pit road all day, solid. And um, just had a solid car all day. We just had a third place car on short runs and uh, we had a winning car on the long run, just never got it. And they're going on to Martinsville, a place they had a great year one year ago. Krista? Well, last fall, Kyle Busch led 415 of 500 laps and did not win the race. He has been here in Bristol Victory Lane before, but he's also been the best car that did not win the race. Kyle Busch takes a breath and climbs out of the victorious number 18. As he celebrates with his crew, celebration becoming familiar for this young man. Kyle, I gotta ask, did last fall flash into your head at all, knowing you were the dominant car then and didn't win? Did, did you think of that? It's pretty awesome, you know, this is just, uh, <laughs> they're a little late, but oh well. Um, you know, this is just awesome. You know, we should have won here last fall. We should have won here yesterday. We, we've had so many great nationwide cars here, too. We just keep getting messing up on pit road. But um, I just want to thank Snickers, m and Sprint, Interstate Batteries, Toyota, NOS Energy Drink, Marquee Jets. Of course, thank the fans. You know, they're great for being here, too. And so it's just a, an overall great day. You know, the car handled well. We made some adjustments to it. Steve was good on pit road. Guys were great on pit road today. So really came out. Well, you mentioned yesterday, one thing you've said that's different about you this year is you've learned to take some bad days and kind of salvage something, not let them haunt you. Do you feel that today? Well, I didn't do so, I didn't do so good yesterday of, uh, of keeping my emotions in check, but um, you know, th this is a little bit of redemption here. You know, this place probably owes you, owes me a few, but you can never ask a racetrack to pay you back. You got to go out there and keep working at it and keep trying to do what you know how to do and that's to win races and fortunately today we had a good enough car we were up there and we had a car to take the shot at winning this thing and here we are in victory lane so I, it's awesome with the cup wins the truck wins and the duel you have won something every weekend steve all right thanks krista with jimmy johnson third place finish a place where you've never won but i guess the improvement continues and talk about this day specifically yeah what a day for us um truthfully i wish we had another 500 laps to go i feel great and really getting the rhythm of this racetrack and understanding what i need to do and how to lead chad in adjustment so um, i really have to thank chad and greg ives and our engineering staff sitting me down a couple weeks ago to look at this racetrack and what i really need here and i made my wish list and, and they gave me what i needed so uh, it's a great day for the slows cobalt tools and paula uh, i want to thank all the employee owners at Lowe's for supporting us and uh, all the fans for the 48. Great day here. I know uh, we gave the 48 fans something to cheer for today. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. A dominating performance by Kyle Busch. Close but no cigar once again for Denny Hamlin, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane. But how about Montoya with his second career top 10 on a short track and Marcus Ambrose? We talked about him a lot in the late stages of the race. Down a cylinder, hung on for a top 10. Darryl. That's pretty impressive, really. When you have engine trouble, you can get his top 10 out of it and then Kurt had trouble early on and got in the back of a car and messed the front end up. Carl kind of rebounds, gets a 15th place. And look at Amendinger, Larry. 16th place, going to Martinsville. Pretty comfortable. He's locked in. Pretty comfortable. Looks like uh, we talked about Joey Logano. It looks like he may hang on to a spot in the top 35 and not have to qualify on time when we get to the paper clip next week. Looks like the real winner on that top 35 situation, unofficially a team that came in here not locked into the top 35. They're going to leave here. 35th will be Eric Almarola in the eight car. They came in outside the top 35. And add to that, Mark Martin will be in the top 35 and uh, not have to qualify on time. 
So here is the danger zone as we call it. Everyone above the red bar at Martinsville is locked into the field. Everyone below the red bar will have to qualify on time. And this will change week to week with this year's Sprint Cup point standings. And uh, Travis Quapple had that good run today, finished up there in the top 20. And uh, sadly, they may not be at Martinsville with that 28 car unless sponsor comes their way. Lots more to come from Bristol Motor Speedway. After Kyle Busch's dominating win, he led 378 laps today. Stick around. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Welcome to the Lipitor post-race show. NASCAR on Fox live from Sun Splash, Bristol, Tennessee. And for the sixth time in the career of Joe Gibbs Racing, his drivers finishing 1-2, the first for Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. And Krista standing by with Coach. That's right, Chris. Regardless how those final two laps panned out, it was going to be Coach Gibbs here in victory lane. But to have your other driver, Joey Logano, kind of cause or bring about that situation, a little bit bittersweet for you. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, with uh, Home Depot, you know, we, we lose a motor there. I think we have great motors. We always do a great job in our motor room. But to lose a motor like that, Joey fought hard all day. And so it, I think you're right. It's the whole range of emotions. So fired up about FedEx, Denny was right there all day. Had a great car, and then to have Snickers and Mars, you know, have a great day and finish with Kyle like that, win a race. I think if you go back and check, we've led, I don't know how many laps here, the last three years or so, and I don't, I don't know that we've even finished in the top ten, so this is a real thrill for us. Uh, hate it for Home Depot, but the uh, rest of our race team here, we're really excited. Coach, is there anything Kyle Busch can't do in a race car? I, 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 I haven't seen it. Uh, I know the Lord's blessed us with a great crew, too, and everybody that back home. We thank everybody back at the shop. It, it takes so much to make these things go. We got a great team feeling, and I uh, really appreciate that. Lord bless us with a great group of guys. One, two, finish for Joe Gibbs Racing. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, uh, Joe Gibbs. And Kyle Busch has been dominant in the Toyota, followed by Denny Hamlin. And just in case you tuned in a little bit later, it was a brisk moving race, especially for John Andretti off the banking and sliding in for an early caution. Kurt Busch, who told us in the pre-race, this place will chew you up and spit you out into the back of Kevin Harvick, actually Todd Bodine, a part of that uh, caution, and Kurt frustrated and not a factor. Meanwhile, his brother, Kyle, taking the lead from Jimmy Johnson on the 69th lap. At that point, it was a Kyle Johnson show, but after 100, Kyle, the leader. Jamie McMurray running in the top 10 here. And a heated exchange there with Juan Pablo Montoya. Jimmy Johnson here off of pit road with 178 laps to go. Winning the race to get the lead, but then watching the 18. That's his teammate, Kyle Busch, treating him with disregard to get the lead back from Denny Hamlin. And then Kyle once again with 131 laps to go, taking care of Jimmy Johnson, leading 378 laps in this race. Kyle Busch, it was a caution, a restart. Green-white checker, there was no catching. Kyle Busch, who's becoming a regular in victory lane. His mom used to, the young, younger of the two, actually her sons have won the last three races. Mom in there to say, way to go, kid. Mom's day is uh, next month. Maybe you'll win another one between now and then. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel here in Bristol, Tennessee, and thanks for tuning us in on this afternoon. Well, it's been kind of a weird start to the season. Kenseth wins a couple, then it's the Bush brothers, but Kyle Bush, and he was on a roll last year, has really dominated. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is right now, Chris, as far as if I was a crew chief or a team owner for another operation was getting beat as bad as we're getting right now by Kyle Bush, I think I'd go back to my shop tomorrow morning and sit everybody down and say, guys, we got to do a little bit better job of figuring out how to get a hold of this young man and, and get our, our program ramped up because again it just seems like he he moves at will i mean once they get that car dialed in here he comes and nobody can kind of catch him. i mean are the toyotas that much better i will mean, one two finish yeah i mean it looks like it may be one of those situations where i don't believe that the car is that much better but definitely right now the young man is definitely up on the wheel. Darrell likes to say he wants to win races, and I think that's the challenge. Everybody's got to be challenged more to be able to try to beat him. They're going to have to take him and really get in there and get after him because I think you can frustrate him. I think that's the main yeah. thing that guys need to take. Darryl, I mean, put this way. Darrell used to be able to get in guys' heads and sometimes get them off of sync. That's what somebody's got to do with him. As patient and as perfect as we've seen Kyle Busch run a race, but the points leader is Jeff Gordon, and he's standing by with our Matt Yoakum. 
Well, it seems like old times at Bristol. Jeff Gordon started the day as a championship point leader. He'll leave it as well. And Jeff, when you look at this day, how would you describe it walking out of Thunder Valley with a top five? Well, it was just an incredible team battle. Uh, you know, I just I love the fight that these guys in the Stupont Chevrolet are putting up. Um, you know, I, I mean, I wish the chase is right now because we're we're in championship form right now. You know, we're very consistent. We're fighting. We're making good adjustments. Great pit stops. But you know, I was a little disappointed. I really thought we were going to be better than that yesterday in practice. The car was incredible, and I thought um, you know we were going to be able to back that up. And at the start of the race, it was pretty good. But we just uh, I don't know the track changed. We couldn't keep up with it. And there at the end, we finally got it back, and the guys just busted off a great pit stop, got us in the top five and our top six, and we were able to pass the cars come on fourth. So it was a great points day, great day all the way around. But uh, you know, when you see that 18, 11 as strong as they were, and even our teammate Jimmy was better than we were. You know, we know we got some work to do. You mentioned the track change, and a lot of guys felt like around the halfway point. It's almost like flipping a switch. It just went away where a lot of guys thought they had tire problems. Was that the case for you? Yeah, I didn't ever feel like I had a tire problem. I just, uh, I was just tight, tight, tight in, and loose, loose, loose off. You know, and we, you know, it just every time we'd fix it at the beginning of the run, we'd hurt at the end of the run, and every time we fixed the end of the run, we'd hurt the beginning, and. Finally, uh, we made one adjustment there that, that seemed to, to you know, bring the car back to life a little bit, but we were just too tight. And then we were able to just free it up as a whole, and it, and it was really good that last run. Jeff Gordon leaves Thunder Valley with a top five finish. He leaves here fourth. So Jeff is the points leader. He's not going to like us bringing this up, but it is 46 races since his last win. Points win, of course, and that's the longest in his career. But look at the Bush brothers, uh, Jeff. Uh, Kurt and Kyle right up there in the top five. Carl Edwards doesn't have a win this year either, but hanging in there at fifth. Yeah, you talk about Kurt Busch. I mean, he got caught up in that wreck early. He still came home with an 11-place finish and was able to maintain, really basically, basically hop over Clint Boyer for second in the points. So I think that's one thing when he steps back and realizes that, you know, the team is performing well even through all the adversity. So I think that, you know, a pretty good day for him. And you did not see Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that group. Jimmy Johnson, who was 13th, did jump up to 9th. Yeah, and one other guy right here we can't overlook is the 11th guy, the double zero of David Rudin. Let's get some thoughts again from Larry, Darrell, and Mike. Well, two of the super teams in Sprint Cup, Joe Gibbs Racing and Rick Hendrick Racing, did real well today. But Roush Fenway Racing, which has won seven of the last 12 Sprint Cup races here, fared poorly. They only had one car in the top 25, and that was uh, Carl Edwards back in 15th place. Yeah, they, they didn't have the greatest today, but you know something I saw today, and it, it kind of brought back to my memory. 30 years ago, I saw uh, a young man come in here and win a race, and everybody he was a little rough around the edges, and everybody said, yeah, that guy's got a lot of talent, but I don't know if he can ever win a championship or not. I think we know the rest of the story. That guy was Dale Earnhardt, and he went on to win seven championships. We're seeing that again with this kid. Winning a lot of races, can he win a championship? I think he's going to win a lot of championships.